What's up guys and welcome to the Spirit King's 10 man normal rating guide. Uh, basically a healing guide as always and of course the abilities will be scrolling above me during this video. Let's get right into it. This fight uh, is a four phase fight. Um, each boss has their own different abilities and after you kill the, each, of the, uh, each of the sub bosses one of their abilities will remain. It's always a set ability. The only RNG in this fight is which ability is or which boss is going to be um, in which or in which order because it's not never going to be in the same order so keep that in mind um, we got lucky on this kill um, really the only thing that you have to make sure you don't get is the maddening shout first that will be annoying to get first other than that you really don't have to worry about anything uh, Quang again this is the guy with the huge cleave so what you're doing is your entire raid is stacking in front of the boss until he does this ability once he does that ability all you do is you turn right around, you just run right through them, get out of it, rinse and repeat, that's the entire boss. The only extra mechanic that you have to worry about is the mechanic that carries over, and that ability is called uh, flanking orders. What he does is he sends a group of warriors through the room, kind of like a wall. Okay, if you get touched by the wall, you die. Um, it doesn't move very fast, uh, the range is not as large as I thought it was, but again, if it hits you, you will die. You should have no problem. What you're going to want to do to get through this is make sure that the tank is tanking close to the middle of the room just because you don't know where the flanking orders are going to come from. And if he's on one side or another and the flanking orders come out there, it's just more raid movement um, if he's in a bad position. And especially while, while the Merciless is up, um, the other reason that you want to make sure that you don't have to move a lot is because if the tank has to book it across the room and he gets cleaved and no one else is in front of him uh, the tank's gonna take a, sh a lot a lot of damage okay a lot of damage don't use the other word not a good word um, but that's what's gonna happen so pretty much this entire fight for the first guy is for healing at least is just dodge uh, flanking orders move as a group uh, stay in front of the boss until he asphyxiates and then get behind the boss you can stay stacked the entire time okay this next boss is actually kind of cool um, this next boss, I, I just call the arrow boss. Okay, he does this pillage ability, and this is the ability that is um, brought throughout the entire fight. This is the ability that he continues on with after you die. As you can see right now, there's another flanking order. That's from the first boss. That ability will still come out. It does not come out quite as often. It comes out, I think, like every minute or so, so it's not something huge that you have to worry about. But it does still happen, so be aware that um, that needs to happen. On the arrow boss, what you're doing is he has three abilities. Again, pillage is the first one. Pillage is the ability that he carries over. And pillage is um, a very, very devastating ability. What this ability does is he burns at somebody, puts a red circle on the ground, does a bunch of spin roonies and if you get caught, like right here, and if you get caught inside of that, it dumps all your gear. Uh, he steals all your gear for, I believe, it's 20 seconds. Um, either way, it's long enough to where you become completely ineffective so if this happens to a healer or a tank you're screwed the nice thing about this fight is because you only have one tank and because you really don't need more than two healers you have seven DPS burning this, these bosses down so it, they you don't have to go through the phases very very long um, the next ability that this boss does that you just saw was called volley now what volley does is it shoots arrows at a random it'll target a random player right it will then shoot arrows in that direction in a wide spray, a medium spray, and then a small spray. If you get hit by the wide spray, it's not a huge deal. If you get hit by the medium spray, it's kind of a big deal. If you get hit by that small volley, it will kill you, okay? You, there is no reason that you should not see this monster group of arrows. Figure out where the middle of that big group of arrows is and don't go that way. Go the other way. Um, there's also an ability uh, called Piercing Arrow, which if you remember Maragar is like a bone spike. All you have to do um, is make sure that you're eight yards apart so it only hits one person. And again, you can bop people out of this. Um, that's the tactic we use. Or you can just turn and burn it. The only trick is, is make sure that if you have a Paladin, save the, his bops just in case there's a flanking order that comes out the same time as Piercing Arrow. We did run into one time where we got hit by the Piercing Arrow. Um, and then as the flanking orders were coming and they didn't break the arrow out in time, um, so we died. Um, so that's something you need to be aware of that. I, if you have a paladin in the group, save that bot because the arrows don't have a lot of health. Everybody who's ranged should be turning and burning that real quick. You have the extra DPS. Even healers really can even just throw something on it. 
uh, because it, it's not a very healing intensive fight if everybody's doing their job. 95% um, of the damage in this fight is avoidable. Um, and then, of course, you have the third boss, which we got in this kill video, and that is the Maddening Shout boss. Um, he has a couple different really cool abilities. Um, the first one is when he's in cowardice, like, his bar will fill up, right? And as his bar is filling up, um, when he's not in cowardice, like, he, the cowardice is the face you're seeing right now where he just kind of follows you around the room and fixates and just runs around, okay? Um, it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. It's pretty much, in normal mode, it's a worthless phase. You just pretty much burn the boss the entire time. Just stay a little bit spread out. Obviously, when Maddening Shout comes out, you stack up. Um, but then the other ability that he has, and I'll go over that real quick because that's the more important one. Um, and this is how, if you have DPS who are tunneling extremely hard, um, this is where they will kill themselves. Okay? Um, as his Rage Bar and Fury Bar fill up, what happens is he reflects more and more damage. Now he has an ability that you can interrupt um, that you need to interrupt at the beginning. Okay, when his bar is low, the more inter the longer you can keep his bar low, the more DPS you can do. The problem is once his bar gets to, I think we did it at about 70%, 75%, when his bar is at about 70, 75%, you stop all interrupts, you let him, you kind of slow down your DPS a little bit. Um, because what's happening is every time you DPS him, he's reflecting damage back onto you, so you're really, really starting to hurt yourself, and you don't want to do that, okay? Um, and then Maddening Shout, which is the ability he carries over, is actually pretty simple. You just pretty much jump in and stack up real quick and make sure that you have AoE. So what we did in this case was we had our, um, our warrior do Dragon's Roar, we had Death and Decay, um, we also had Chain Lightning. Uh, our group has pretty good AoE capabilities, and most classes do. So make sure that you're specking to that. I remember the first attempt, our warrior was specced into Blade Storm, which didn't make much sense for us because there's no ads. Whereas Dragon War, with its every minute cooldown, he could use it every minute, break us all out of the AoE or out of the shout extremely quick, and we could get back to DPS in the boss. The problem is while you're mind controlled like that, um, everybody has to take a certain amount of damage. If they don't, it doesn't break the mind control. So. It just makes it a pain in the butt, especially because the whole raid's taking damage. This is when you're going to want to use your um, raid cooldowns as well. So, like, after everyone's broken out, using your Trank, your Aura Mastery, you're using your uh, Rallying Cries, your personal cooldowns, anything after you're broken out, anything that'll just help give the healers a little bit of a buffer zone um, so that they don't have to burn through all of their mana. Um, and then that's pretty much that whole guy. Remember, he does do Maddening Shout afterwards, but that's not a big deal. The last boss is the Shadow Boss. He has a couple of interruptible abilities. We actually let them go off a couple times just to see what would happen. And in normal mode, um, either this guy's really undertuned or he's designed to just be a cakewalk. Uh, but his main ability that carries over is these little shadow guys that will follow you around. And you have to kite them around the outside of the room because you want them to die in the outside of the room so that the tank doesn't have to worry about them. All ranged DPS and healers, if possible, need to just turn and burn these guys because once they die, they drop Defile on the ground. I mean, the same exact animation as Defile was from Lich King. And then, that's pretty much it. Um, that's the whole fight, is just breaking those guys down, um, or for this guy, is just breaking, or killing those adds, making sure you're getting as many interrupts on them as you can. Um, we popped Hero on the fourth boss. We didn't really see a benefit any other time. Um, the reason we use it on the fourth boss is just because at the end of this fight, guys, there's so much stuff going on because of all the bosses that are dead and all the different abilities that you have to watch out for that it just made the phase quicker. And the quicker you can get through the most annoying phase, the better, right? Um, so that's why we popped it there. You are more than welcome to pop it anytime. I was a little bit disappointed with this fight, guys. Um, I thought it was undertuned. Uh, I, I think we, we literally could have one-shot it. Um, and I think we ended up three-shotting it. And I, just compared to some of the other fights, like the learning curve really wasn't very steep. Like, it was very obvious what you were supposed to do. Um, now, granted, we all had watched different videos and stuff on it, but, I mean, it really wasn't that hard to figure out exactly what was going on. So I would recommend, as long as you can, you know, just keep your eyes open, watch out for the abilities you need to watch out for, you won't have a problem with anything else, um, burn them as quick as you can. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.